Okay, so I have got the seat protector on because uh, we haven't got seat covers yet. And the the mats that you can see at the back there and over there, one of them has fallen down. Um, they're just to protect the leather um, from the seats rubbing. Um, they're in for secure mats, so they've got a little tuck-in narrow bit at the end of them, which I've tucked in down the back of um, between the bottom and back of the seat. Um, and then we need to get the seats in, but not actually attached in so that we can pull the back of the uh, seat back down. Okay, so I've got the seats just sitting there. I don't have the tethers connected yet. Um, just got the tether down over there ready to go in and the tether on the rear facing seat over there. Um, the tether will go underneath the headrest and then connect into the anchor point. Um, and then this one will go down the back as well. This is the difficult one um, just due to accessibility at the back um, and because I've got to get it tight. Um, so what we need to do now is just have, now that the seats are in place, pull the back of the seat down um, so that we can get in there a bit. Um, it's important to, when you're connecting the anchor points in, you can't just hook them you can't just hook them on the back like that and have them twisted. They have to go down the back with enough room that they can hook on like that and then turn around and come up so that that anchor point is going straight up. The anchor point can't be twisted. So um, it'll, I'll explain and I'll show and explain, but it's very important that those anchor points are attached up like that with this part here to the back of the car and this part here through the hook. Okay, so I've got my daughter helping me now, my elder one. These have to be hooked on like this. You can't... No, no, no. You, what? Okay, so we've got um just re-angling things. Because it has to be like this, you can't, you cannot hook it like that. It is easier to do. And it makes our life a lot easier, but it ends up in a twisted tether and you cannot have a twisted tether. So you need to give yourself enough room that you can hook it like this and then come up. And then take as much slack out as you can so that when you put it back, it doesn't fall down like this. It's got to stay up. So take slack out, but you, you can't really get it tight yet because you've got to put the back back anyway. okay so what i've done is when i've pulled this tight i've inadvertently pulled through here out of the seat which is just going to make it so much harder for me to thread everything through so just be really careful that you know how your seat adjusts its tether and that you're not inadvertently lengthening the gap between your adjuster buckle and the back of your seat you need that as short as possible so that you've got room when it's hard up against here to adjust all right so we're just going to pause now and go to the other side okay so this one um is the same goes underneath um you never put a tether over the top of a headrest it always has to go underneath and making sure that the rods aren't interfering. And again, we need to hook it down. And then have it come up. And then we're going to pause again and go around the... Uh, actually, no, no, we'll stay here. So, this seat is for a almost two-year-old. Uh, because... So, we're going to go through here.
All right, so we're just gonna, oh yeah, no, you can see that good. Excellent, so you wanna put all of your weight in the base of the seat, making sure you're not pushing on the seat belt. And get all of that slack out. This is called a locky, so it's instead of the instead of the red clip that comes with the InfoSecure seats. So this is also an InfoSecure product, um, and it just makes car seat installation um, of the locking of the seat of the lap sash a whole lot easier. So all it does is that tab inserts and on these seats it needs to go upside down on the for this make of car which is a ford ranger goes in there and pushes in and that seat belt is now is now locked in the same as if you had a red clip on there okay so i'm going to put the red clip on you can see i've got a um an under seat protector because i've got spares behind because this here has been rubbing on the leather and um almost marking it so again, I'm just using my knee to put as much downwards and backwards pressure as I can through that seat belt. So these red clips, they do not go over both. They only go over the, the bit that's coming out and you need to get that up hard against that clip there, against that buckle and snap it over. So that ensures that that seat doesn't have any play as you can see, I'm pushing on that and there's no movement. Okay, don't insert yourself. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to tighten up this tether. So if you can pull, so pulling on this top bit here is going to pull it through from underneath. So if you can just pull up as much as you can. You basically have to just get your fingers in there and just wiggle it bit by bit and grab it and wiggle it, grab it and wiggle it. And then pull it through. It is hard to do. So all I'm doing here is pushing your finger. Can you see like where my finger is? Yeah. Pushing my finger, keeping the upwards tension, pushing my finger so that it pulls it through from underneath. Like this, it's literally coming through half a centimetre every time. It is long and tedious, but painfully necessary to keep, or else you end up with too much movement in the back. And in an accident, that play will allow um, too much force to be exerted through the child and not through the car seat. And also allow them to move in, it, in the seat to move, allowing whiplash. So one thing I have discovered is one thing I have found is that this tether at the back what you can do is you can have it going behind the the rubber stop at the back of the seat behind the seat and have it coming down and you can then access it from behind I have discovered you can then pull on it so I've just taken some of the slack out hold it there Oh, your hand can pull on it and supporting the buckle up the top you can pull it through a bit and then get any you can get like maybe another centimeter of um of tensioning in it and just throw it back in behind there Dad. okay so that's installing the seats um, I did move the front seats right forward in order to be able to do that effectively um, so I can get in there myself. Um, I've got a seat protector here just up behind there that's tucked in down under there just to help protect because these bits, um, this part of the seat here rubs. This is an infrasecure seat so it doesn't have a rebound bar when in rear-facing mode. Um, this seat is for my um, 23 month old. Um, so just a little bit about these seats because some people don't know. Um, 
they have, and that's a great thing about the new Infra Secure seats, they've got twist and lift. So these seats, they've got the three um, points there. You see it says must rear face when shoulders are below this line. Um, a lot of people mistakenly think that at six months old you're supposed to turn the baby around. Um, that's not correct. Six months you can legally turn them around if the seat is um, a forward-facing only seat. Um, and if they have passed this marker. So legally in Queensland, um, and it's similar in other states, but in Queensland, the law states that you must follow the recommendations of the car seat manufacturer and the recommendations for all car seat manufacturers that have this system and everyone has this system is that they must be rear facing when shoulders below this line. So if they're two years old and the shoulders are still below that line, then they legally need to be uh, for rear facing because that's what the manufacturer recommendations are um, for that seat. Up to this point, they can be rear facing or forward facing. Um, above that line, they must be forward facing. And at that upper line there, they need to move to a bigger seat. But my four-year-old, who my nearly four and a half-year-old, who's quite tall for her age, fits in this seat forward facing under that line. Um, when they're in rear facing as well, um, the bum padding should be in, especially when they're still, um, under that one, the padding can then come out so that they can be under that, that marker for longer. Um, and also when they're out or if they're a very sturdy child and are quite wide in that seat, my girls are very petite, so they're fine. Um, yeah, uh, reason to keep them rear facing longer because it's safer. Especially if you're in a four drive and you're doing four driving, they're a lot more cocooned, um, and it's safer for them. They're very comfy. They hang their legs over or they curl the legs up. My little one puts her legs up here. She hangs them over the side, crosses them over. Um, they don't get more leg injuries being rear facing longer. They actually get less because the legs aren't flying up forwards and hitting the back of the seat, which is a common um, accident, common um, repercussion of accidents in children in cars. Um, their legs being broken on the front seats. It doesn't happen when they're rear facing. Um, yeah, that is that is that. Um, so yeah, making sure the locking clips are in correctly. Um, you can also get that red clip and a yellow clip, which is called an Exactus clip. Um, they do come with Infra Secure seats. Other seats have either don't come with one and you have to purchase it or they come with what's called a gated buckle. A gated buckle is supposed to go on this side and a gated buckle connects the seat down here like this. It does the same thing. It's just on, the, on this outer side. Um, I personally feel that it's a lot harder to use a gated buckle and a, um, not as quick as the red clip or the locky, um, but that's just my personal preference. Um, also with tether straps, um, rear facing car seat, sorry, sorry, forward facing car seat, the tether should be tight at the back. A rear facing car seat, all that should happen is that the slack comes out. You don't want to pull it tight, so there should still be some slack. If you're pulling this tight, what you're actually doing is you're pulling this back part up and you don't want to do that. This seat also, and also you can see that's very firm now back that off a bit that's got some play down here if you try to wiggle it down here there's no play there um, the reason for that is in the event of an accident you want the seat to take the movement and the brunt of the accident the baby needs or the child needs to be strapped in here um, because the seat moves and takes the movement not the child you don't because if this seat is rock hard within the car the only thing that's going to move is the baby and that's that's not great um so i hope this has been helpful um i have found this is the f the fourth time i've now installed seats in this car and it is getting quicker and easier it's actually a lot easier this time than the other times it's been a royal pain in the backside previously um but yeah it is it is trickier in these dual cabs there's not a lot of room um, and it usually, I managed to do it this time without swearing and cursing. Awesome. Um, but anyway, I hope this helps and, um, yeah, thank you.